Okay, in today's video, I am going to show you how to set up a Facebook lead ad. Lead ads are absolutely amazing for a few reasons. Uh, number one, in recent years, Facebook has really preferred these as opposed to website conversions. The reason is Facebook makes money by keeping people on Facebook. Lead ads are directly inside of Facebook, so users don't have to leave because you are staying on Facebook or users are staying on Facebook, Facebook has the ability to make more money. So that's the number one and, and really the most important reason to use a lead ad. Uh, number two, because people are already signed up with uh, on FB, they have their user, their email, their phone numbers already installed. Basically, when the form pops up, it is pre-filled. So what this does is it's essentially one or two buttons the person has to click. You remove steps and you make it easier for people to interact with your business. This is much the same way as like Amazon operates. They removed all of the stuff. Uh, they made checking out and delivery as simple as possible. So the company exploded. The same thing for lead ads because now they're not relying on your website loading properly or uh, your landing page, you know, information being uh, above average. Uh, basically, they cut out steps and they just made it easier for people to ask for more information or to redeem their offer. So let's, uh, no, final thing here. If you haven't already established goals for your campaign, if you haven't set up your targets, please refer to the previous video. I'll, meant, I'll link to it in the comments. Uh, essentially, you always want to set up a goal before starting any campaign. That way you know if your campaign is working effectively and when to scale it up. Anyways, let's get into the lead ad. Okay, so getting started. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you go to business.facebook.com. Make sure that you have a business account. So we are inside of our ads manager. Uh, next thing you want to make sure is that you have the right ad account. After you get past these steps, what you're going to do is click this green button and create a new ad. Uh, the first question that pops up is your objective. At this step, what we want to do is set up a lead generation objective and click continue. Okay, now that we are inside of our campaign, basically what it asks right off the top is to name the campaign with our campaign. I like to name it something uh, basically that reflects the offer we're running so I can see it right off the top. Uh, I'm going to call this, um, mm, let's call this one, sorry there, call this one free ad. Uh, Ad Ronin video. Uh, as we go through this, uh, basically, we are not a special ad category. If you are in real estate or in finance, uh, credit, or politics, you have to define one of these. When you click those categories, unfortunately, you lose a lot of the uh, really advanced targeting features for Facebook. Those are the features that really set Facebook apart. The reason that these are important uh, is essentially they want Facebook to be a fair place. So they don't want credit opportunities to only go to specific types of people or uh, employment to be restricted from certain types of people. Housing, they want to make sure everybody has the same options. Uh, so this is just their attempt to keep Facebook um, open and and good for everybody uh, so going through we have our buying type it's an auction that means our spending and ad performance is going to be judged against everybody else's they're going to serve the better ads first we make good ads so i'm not worried there our objective is lead generation uh, and just as we navigate farther down the page uh, i don't have any a b testing set up but i'm going to switch to campaign budget optimization uh, this just means if we create several uh, ad sets or ads, ad sets with specific ads, basically one daily budget is going to be enough for the entire campaign. Uh, now that we have that in, we're going to click next. Okay, 
Now, what is loading right here is the ad set level. So when we're at the ad set level, I basically always do this according to our targeting. Uh, for this, I'm going to call this uh, digital marketers. Oh, that's not how to spell marketers. Digital marketers in Canada. Um, well, that's not really specific. You know what? Let's call this one um, business owners in Ontario. Uh, that way it's just usable for everybody. Now our, our chances here, sorry, our uh, options here are instant forms. That's a lead form. That's what we are using. The other option we would have is direct calls. Experience has showed me it's a lot easier to get people to fill in your form than it is to get somebody to call you directly. Uh, then you just make sure you have the correct Facebook terms side up. Uh, sorry, for correct page selected. Uh, also, you have to, if it's your first time, you're going to have to accept the lead terms for this page. That just means you're not going to do anything crazy with it. You're only going to use these leads that you collect to contact these people. You're not going to sign them up for CD clubs or, you know, a million mailing lists or try to recruit them into some nefarious plan. Uh, so essentially it's going to pre-populate, say our budget and schedule. It's going to start right now at the time that you created this ad. Uh, and then we are going to get into, uh, basically our targeting now, right off the top. If you have custom audiences, lookalike audiences, you would get them in there. If you don't, uh, you know, take away the default setting. We have Ontario. I'm just going to say Ontario, Canada. That's where I am. Uh, here with our locations, we want to switch this to people living in this location. Uh, at the current time, you know, we're still on a semi lockdown, so there isn't a lot of people traveling in and out of the the um, province, but generally almost any time you're doing this ad, especially if you're trying to target business owners, you want people who are actually, they, they live close to you uh, and actually have a chance of redeeming your offer. Um, now, the next thing we get into is our detailed targeting. Now we're targeting business owners. Lots of people start businesses at 18, absolutely. But just to make this a little bit more effective where we want people that can not only that not only have businesses but you know cannot afford our services so we want people who've been in business for basically three to five years at a minimum uh, i'm going to set the age range at 30 at the uh, small end uh, and 65 plus right here uh, because we're focusing on people that are most likely to convert uh, and Typical people retire at 65. We're looking for business owners. Uh, what we want to do is drop that down to 64. Uh, on no level are we saying that people 65 and up are not business owners, but essentially we're paying for these impressions. We're paying to put these ads in front of people. So really what we want to do is make sure that we are putting them in front of the people that are most likely to convert uh, genders, all genders. For me, that works fine. Uh, this is a loose way to target business owners. Um, basically, what we want to do is look for business owners. Mm -mm -mm. So here we go. Now, what we want to do here is if you see, Facebook has a few different levels. They have demographics, behaviors, and interests. Now, interest would be somebody who's interested in owning a business, but we're trying to target behaviors, people who actually own a business. So we're going to type in the first one. And now, because we don't got all data waste right here, we're going to hit suggestions. So job title, to me, that is a strong level of targeting. So we can do that. Um, I'm going to click them and we're just going to keep this open and kind of go through our list right here. 
depending on what we're selling, um, you know, what your business is, you're going to target different uh, job titles, interests, all that kind of thing. If you're looking for dentists, you, you put in dentist. If you're looking for, um, you know, depending on what it is, you can get really creative. But like I said, what you're looking for is behaviors and job titles mainly. Uh, so here we go. Just a, a loose thing right here. Um, but that gets us a projected audience of around 170,000 people. To me, that seems like a realistic number. If we want to just go down to the first level of targeting. So like, basically the difference in these two levels of targeting would essentially be small business owner, and then they give themselves their own job. So this is gonna basically get the same results here. Uh, sometimes we can increase the audience. As a general rule, if I'm doing a lead campaign and I want it to run for about a month effectively, I want a audience of, you know, 100,000 as a minimum. If you're going anything over 500,000 with a limited budget, uh, you're basically just using a shotgun approach. So you can always get a little bit tighter. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna narrow this audience because I not only want you know people who are business owners, I also gonna want people that have a Facebook presence. So what I'm gonna do is type in Facebook page admins. That's another behavior. And this number is gonna shrink down to 110,000. So, you know, just this easy targeting right here is saying these are people who own a small business and also are the admin of their Facebook page. So they have some digital presence. That would also mean they probably have a page that's up and running. Uh, that is good because they would have kind of a track record. They would also have uh, content that's already on the page in case, uh, you know, people will see the ad and then they'll want to follow it up. They want to see what else is online from that company. So by, by doing those things, I find it typically uh, works pretty well for us. Okay, uh, now Facebook is going to default to automatic placement. That means your ad will be shown everywhere. Um, you know, real estate, real estate, real estate, or sorry, location, location, location. What we wanna do is basically experience has proven to me that nothing actually converts better for this style of lead ad than the Facebook newsfeed. So on my first go of any campaign, what I'm going to do is basically deselect everything that isn't uh, the Facebook news feed. Again, just to reiterate, I'm not saying that everything else does not work. However, this works the best for the least amount of money. So it is the place to start first. There's definitely some audiences that are more of like the uh, Instagram audience. You see here, just, just by doing that, we have uh, basically gone from 110,000 people to 100,000 people. So that's probably going to lose a, a little bit of the younger demographic for us here. Uh, just going in, we have no cost control and we're getting charged by impression. So essentially that means every time that our ad shows up on somebody's timeline, that's what is going to uh, trigger us to be charged. Typically impressions can go anywhere from one cent to 10 cents. If you're over the five cent threshold, uh, you wanna maybe take a look at the quality of your ad. Uh, for this ad, with the ad setup, I typically just name it after the ad, plus if it's a picture or video. So I'm gonna call this um, 30 million. Oh, 30 million. And then we'll call this video. Uh, this is just a quick video we did. If you did want it on Instagram, you press it there. Uh, this 30 million was a video we did where we just kind of talked about when the pandemic hit. Um, what we had, or sorry, the, the results we delivered for customers. 
Now, uh, basically what we want to do here is it's just doing a default logo for us. We're going to change this media. Oh, we got to upload a video. Okay, now that it's processed, we hit next. It is correct. And now we get into the actual ad creation. Um, I'm not going to write a real ad here, but just basically call out uh, customers. This is like a basic ad format that we use for most things, like right off the top. Uh, you want to call out your potential customers. Uh, then you're going to agitate, which I did not spell correctly. Agitate offer solution. Uh, and then throw in your call to action. Uh, this would typically include your offer. So, hey, business owners in Ontario, did you know that, you know, this would essentially be, do you know that uh, after the, after COVID hit, we lost the ability to, mm -hmm. So essentially what we want to do is just follow this concept with most ads. Uh, there's lots of different ways to write them, uh, but essentially you just want to predefine who you're talking to here. This is the information that's going to show up above the fold. Uh, so if you want to say attention business owners in Ontario or you know, looking for more leads, that kind of thing, then you can agitate them by you basically illuminate a problem, uh, you know, in 2021 basically a lot of businesses are hampered by uh you know lack of face-to-face -face business so you could kind of bring that up offer a solution which would be move your ads online connect with new customers through targeting and your call to action you would tell them about the offer and tell them exactly what to do uh basically we would say click this button um and to download your coupon worth one free month of digital marketing or something along those lines uh now in your headline if we're going to go with that basic call out i find what converts the best is just to state my offer uh so for this you know if we're going to use that other example we would say sign up for this company's one free month of digital marketing uh and then your description this is going to show up below the fold uh, you're not going to see it on a lot of uh, mobile views but you would get it on a desktop uh this isn't really that important so usually here i like to add in either a uh, quote or basically a um, about us so you know neither of them are super important uh because generally it's not going to be seen but if it does make it all the way to your ad you know it's just another 25, 30 characters that you can get in so that somebody will know a little bit more about your business. Uh, now, display link. What this is going to be is essentially, uh, in our example, we have adronin.com, uh, which is the actual website, ad-ronin.com. But let's say our sales page was ad-ronin.com backslash uh, sweet offer landing page we don't want it to say sweet offer landing page so we would just type in adronin.com because it just looks neater so let's get that in there there you go so in your display here uh this is going to pop up in the form now our call to action generally almost all the time i like to use learn more learn more is just you know it's not as uh in your face it's not asking as much as all of these other things uh, even though like ultimately we want them to sign up or to get the offer or to book now book now to me seems like you're asking a lot you maybe just saw my ad you don't really know enough so i find learn more just works better uh, here you have the other questions that we have we can use an instant form or an automated chat uh, or chat bot we're doing an instant form for this. And let's get into creating the form. So like I said in the intro to this video, uh, the reason these work is because they keep people on Facebook. 
So right off the top, what we want to do is go to settings and go to open. This is going to let prospective customers share this with other people that might like the offer as well. Um, video. Okay, uh, because this is a fake ad, I'm just going to make sure 100% I know what it is. Uh, form type, you have the choice of either more volume or higher intent. I am going to go to more volume um, because you're just more leads gives you more cracks at the can here. For intro, uh, basically, I don't like using an intro. Uh, so I'm just going to say remove the greeting. We just don't need this. Uh, sorry, the intro image is just going to be stolen directly from my ad. So it should just be the, the thumbnail with the monkeys. Uh, we remove the greeting because essentially that's just one extra step. Like I said, uh, the reason that Amazon is super effective is because they've taken away as many steps as possible. So right here off the top, pre-filled questions, ask the user information. This will be pre-filled by their Facebook account and description. This is just essentially saying, uh, let them know uh, basically why you need their information. Uh, here we're going to say, please tell us uh, who is requesting more information about our offer. So it doesn't have to be crazy. Uh, if you get a little more specific here, we could say about the uh, free month of marketing service, about the free new patient examination, about the free house evaluation. You know, just say whatever you'd like. Uh, now in here, there is a lot of different fields that they, you can put on this form. Facebook generally has most of the information already. Um, one thing that I basically always like to switch up here is with the user, I like to separate their first name uh, and then get their last name as well. This just fits better with email uh, providers. Also, you'll see in the next video when I show you how to integrate this with Zapier and Google Sheets, it just works better in the layout. Um, the less things you ask, the better, because generally people don't want to give you more information than they have to. More often than not, I'm just going to keep this with first name, last name, email, and phone number. Now, as we progress down the fields, almost done here, we have to, oh, that's not what we wanted to do. We have to link to our privacy policy. Now, your website should have a privacy policy on it already. We'll click to ours. Uh, and essentially, I'm just copying the link here. Uh, but we're throwing it right in there. Now in the form, it's going to link to that automatically. If you do not have a privacy policy on your website, you can go to uh, privacy policy generator. If you Google that, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Uh, this is super useful. You can just link to it, not put it directly on your page. It'll store all the information. And basically that lets Facebook say to, uh, you know, know that it's done its part to keep your information private. And it also means that you're operating within the correct guidelines. Uh, now, finally, upon completion, it just asks on the last page of the form uh, what you want to say. Thanks, you're all set. You can visit our website or ex exit the form now. Generally, that's good. Uh, now, the last thing that they will ask you to install here is just a link to your, a link to your website. Uh, so if you want to change this and give them more specific information, you could say, uh, you know, thanks, you're all set. We could say, um, you know, please be expecting our call. You know, something along those lines. Um, description, we have it. Uh, now, essentially, what I would suggest here is go through it, make sure everything checks out. This image, you don't have to worry about. That will get there. 
but the reason I'm saying to be very specific is once you press publish, you can no longer edit this information. The form has to stay where it is. Uh, because I've done this hundreds of times, I'm confident to say publish. Also, because this is only a demo video and I'm not running this at <laughs> uh just to go through you'll see now uh that everything is connected crm events uh, essentially what we want to do is just make sure that our that we are using the correct pixel this is just an extra little bit of information you know if these people um see our ad and then uh, visit the website at a later they may not opt in here but it just lets us know basically everything that's going on and lets us just have a higher uh, ability to track it. Uh, now what we'll wanna do is just kind of test it out here, make sure everything looks good. So I've sent a preview to my phone, just make sure everything looks the way that I want it to look. And with that, it's pretty easy. You just click your publish button one thing I always recommend to people is after we publish, step one is go back to the campaign that we are working on and turn it off. Uh, the reason that I am turning this off right now is because in the next video that I'm gonna create, I'm going to show you how you can integrate the opt-in form that we just created and there you go that's how we would set up a facebook lead ad and why it is important i invite you to watch the next video in this series where i will show you how you can connect your the lead form that we just created uh, to various other programs using zapier Zapier is a program that essentially lets all of the different components of marketing campaigns speak to each other uh, without having to pay a crazy amount of money to say, make lead ads, talk to your marketing program, talk to Google Sheets. Uh, it's an essential part of the follow-up process and it is in the next video. So I invite you to uh, click on through to that. If you haven't liked or subscribe, please do. If you have any questions that we didn't cover, uh, please feel free to just leave us a comment down below. Anyways, thank you very much from the whole team here at AdRonin. See you next time.